Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to do another Distro Wars, and we want to have a look at Elementary OS versus Zorin OS. And I want to have a look at these two specifically because these are what are being put out by a lot of Linux content creators right now as some of the greatest new Linux distributions to switch to. And I want to see how do these two compare and are they really all that good for switching to um, on the get-go. And so what we're going to do here is I want to have a look at how they are from the installation perspective and then getting into the system, getting everything set up, installing applications and things like that. And then we'll come back at the end and then we are going to have a look at how the um, how the two distributions will set up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the installation on elementary OS. So when we first boot into this, uh, we see that we need to select our language and keyboard settings. Now elementary OS has a brand new installer and it is really streamlined and really done in an OEM format. You have encryption kind of by default. You can opt in, opt out to it, but it's a lot easier to see. You don't have to click anything there. And the installation goes pretty quick. It's not like, you know, two minutes, but it is pretty quick. And then you get an OEM install. There's um, no choosing your username yet. All of that, all your settings, all those types of things, those are all done on the first boot. Now, this is going to be the same installer that Pop! OS has been using. Elementary team has been developing it, although this is the first distribution the, with the, the new release, Elementary OS 6. This is the first distribution where they're actually using this new installer. Now, on the, on the downside for the user friendliness factor on elementary, at least in my personal setup, the, when you click finish and reboot after the installation is complete, it never kicks the ISO out, image out. And so it reboots back into the installer again. And that's in a virtual machine setting. If you're doing it on real hardware, you probably know to pull that thing out. But then I found that if I get back into the uh, into the screen and then I hit the shutdown, routinely I had problems with elementary OS actually uh, coming in and shutting down properly. In every instance, I had to manually force off my uh, my virtual machine. Now that's kind of a very, very minor point. Now when we first log in, the first time use, again, you're going to select your language, your keyboard setting. This is not redundancy. This is how an OEM install is supposed to be. You might be setting it up for a different setup. So now on first boot, you're going to select your individual name. It does warn us that we're using a small password, but it still lets us do it, and that's all fine. We get an indication the number lock is on. I believe we'd also get one if cap lock was on. But we go ahead and get logged into the system, and we have a very brief tutorial. Now, elementary is it's kind of based on a Mac OS type feel. They have put in light theme, dark theme with accent colors. This is absolutely something that is better than it has had in the past. And the color wheel will allow you to choose your accent color as an average of what is inside of your image. You have night light, um, turn on, turn off. Zorin also has these. You can delete old files. Now when it comes to the online accounts that you can see in the startup menu, they really don't have any. You can do an IMAP and a CalDAV. Not bad for syncing your next cloud calendar, but really not particularly useful in, in anything here. And then the last factor is how your software is running. So once you land on your uh, desktop, it's very simple. There's no ability to do desktop icons without installing extra extensions or doing other things. And every version of elementary, they seem to break the previous methods of doing that, kind of like they don't really want you doing something that you that, that they don't want you to do. They do have a nice selection of wallpapers, and then uh, they do have some good parental tools, and their application permissions are really good out of the box. Now, everything you have to understand in the new elementary OS is based on flat packs. They're isolating everything out of the get-go, and uh, we're going to come back to that in a brief moment. 
but inside of your settings it's just a very simple uh, easy to use setup there's really nothing else uh, that's super important again the online accounts is here if you have another uh, another thing to uh, to set up and you can go back into your uh, desktop and your theming settings if you want to change your, your theming notification settings works the volume settings gets us easily to sound settings we have input output selects and uh, they have done a lot of positive improvements now where elementary colossally fails and I expanded on this on my more detailed video so check out that for a lot more detail but as we flip through the App Center you'll notice there's really nothing in here despite being based on flat packs and isolating flat packs they also do not give us any flat pack repositories other than their own personal curated apps and they don't actually seem to have any apps they have nothing for image editing they have nothing for for video editing they have no basic office suite in fact if you would try to install an office suite through the flat packs it gives you a warning that says that this is an uncurated software and it might be dangerous to use. That is a frightening thing for a brand new user to see. So I think that this distribution does tend to alienate everybody. It will alienate the people on, on the one side that are brand new users because there's, they're going to think there's nothing in here and it's a safety risk installing even a basic word processor suite. Whereas... Um, uh, a more advanced user, they may not have enough in this. They don't. You can't go into the software center and just say, "Hey, we're going to add a a Flat Hub repository." And frankly, the Flat Hub repository should be added and should be considered safe because this is something with a lot of eyes looking at. So there is my take on Elementary. I'm not sure how well it it uh, stacks up or not. It's just kind of okay in all reality. It looks interesting um, if you really like the Apple look subjective opinion I don't like it I don't think it's classy I don't think it's beautiful I think it kind of difficult to use and get in your way that is a very subjective opinion but you can't do anything about it if you're like okay so you boot up elementary there's really nothing in it there's nothing in it for applications it's you can't use desktop icons. You can't control the system. You can't feel like it's yours, again, without installing the extra tweak tools that people will invariably tell you in the comments to install. The problem is they make these very difficult to install. They're not in repositories. You have to add extra things, and then they cripple the ability to do PPAs and dev packages and things like that. So elementary does indeed cripple itself. It hurts the brand new user, but it also hurts the seasoned Linux user. I'm not quite sure who would recommend it. Although a lot of people do, probably because it's beautiful or whatever else. I, I just don't get it. I don't get elementary. Let's go back and have a look now at Zorin OS. Sorry to tip my hand already. Now, Zorin OS, that's using the basic Ubuntu installer, uh, so it's not an OEM um, you have the option here to install it or to try it and then when you install it of course you select your language select your keyboard and this one of course you're going to have the option to install updates install third parties now they do have a census I am NOT a huge fan of that and a number of us spoke about this when it first came out causing Zorin to put the opt-out it would be better if it's opt-in but at least it is there on the installer and you have the option to opt-out you do have the option to do something else or a race if you click the advanced features you do have the option to encrypt it's just not as easy as elementary so elementary's installer is clearly the better installer of these two but once you get past the fact that it doesn't eject itself and doesn't shut the system down right um, but outside of that uh, here's you're gonna select your username and your password here on the installation process and then you're gonna go ahead and set up the install and wait for the install to go they take a very comparable amount of time despite uh, Zorin is doing a full install when you boot it up you just log right into your user elementary is an OEM install so on first boot you're gonna log into the system and you're going to uh, you're going to log into the system and then you're going to just use your um, uh, set everything up in there. Now Zorin does properly boot out the ISO. It allows us to uh, 
to uh, jump in. And then it does have a lot better animation screens. Um, it does look a little bit flashier out of the box. Now, when we first land in, we have uh, the default is X, but we do have a Wayland option. These are things you do not have the choice of in elementary. You don't have the choice between Wayland or X. I believe it's just Wayland, if I remember. And then here we land on it. Zoran's biggest complaint is it's super white. It is bright. Um, but we do now have the option for dark themes and for accent colors. So our tour is a little bit nicer. Here's our Zoran appearance. So if you like that Mac type view, you have that option. It's something that's in there. If you want something that's more uh, Windows like, you have that in there as well. And this is the free version. Now, if you pay for the extra version, you'll have more themes, more layouts, and the paid option gives you direct support. So if you're new to Linux and you want support on your hands, definitely it's worth paying the 40 bucks for the Zorin team because it is an excellent software. You can see here though that you can customize everything, title bars, left, right, you can do animations, you can do your, your jelly mode to get wobbly windows over there uh, if that's kind of your thing or you can turn them off. And then of course, for me, I work off of the desktop and I've always worked off of the desktop and I think that this is uh, a good and appropriate thing. So we have the option to use icons on the desktop or if you don't like them, you can disable that option. That's perfectly fine. At least Zorin though gives you the choice. So you do have a lot of options and settings in the appearance setups. Now the next thing we have virtual machine since it's a text run a virtual machine I'm not going to bother doing guest editions check out our online accounts here though you actually have options Google Nextcloud Microsoft Flickr Foursquare uh, Microsoft Exchange, IMAP, SMTP. So all of these types of things you can do here. Additionally, we have software to easily connect your mobile device, which you can get this app from the Google Play Store or from FDroid. The software, we'll have a look at the software here in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and hit the let's go shopping because that's going to make sure the cache is refreshing in the background. Now here we already have a full office suite installed with LibreOffice and uh, it is the full suite. You can see even, uh, well it doesn't have the database in there. Uh, you can install it if you want to. We do have the option for only office and it never tells you, hey, this is, uh, this is dangerous to install uh, like a basic office suite. We also have GIMP installed out of, out of the box and so we have image editing and an office suite. Now, when we get into the software store, what we will actually find is that it is a fully curated software store. Not only do we have easy access to the Ubuntu repositories, which elementary kicks out of its uh, out of its store, it also is fully enabled with Flat Hub, which gives you the best flat packs and the most secure flat packs, and it also gives you snaps, which I'm not a huge fan of snaps, but some people do like snaps. And so the fact that Zorin out of the box gives you the ability to do flat packs or snaps is a good thing and you can see up at the top there you can see where the source is going to be um, I'm not sure why discord is not giving us a flat pack option I know it is available as a flat pack um, but uh, if you look at some other software then um, you'll be able to see that there's snaps and flat packs and repository versions inside of this and this is very similar to what the Ubuntu is going to do although Ubuntu is using the snap store now um, and not um, not the GNOME Software Center. But here we'll go ahead and search for um, Kden Live, which is the software package I always go to because there's a repository version, there is a Snap version, and there is a Flatpak version. So there you can see FlatHub, the Snap channels, and we have the repository version of it. So you have options, the software's there, and the software is ready to go. So there is Zorin OS. Um, so looking at these two distributions, I have no earthly idea why you would point elementary to somebody as a new user. It's a niche case at best. It's a niche curiosity in the Linux world. But as far as an easy uh, for the use, Zorin installs easier. It's more intuitive. It actually has software in the repositories and it installs with software that is useful like office suites. Most people want an office suite. I can understand a Linux distribution that does not package one, but I also can understand a Linux distribution that does package one. This gives you the suite for LibreOffice with an option in their welcome screen to also click the button for the only office. So you have either one of them and it tells you 
LibreOffice, better for the open document, only office, better for the docx documents. Um, whether or not you agree with that is a different perspective, but at least they're making the effort to tell us what we have inside of our repositories. So these are actually all really good things to look at. So for me, looking at these two distributions, it is absolutely unequivocally a clear winner. Zorin OS is definitely going to be your best Linux distribution for a new user, or even for a seasoned Linux guy that just wants a good distribution if you're wanting to change and get a different refresh. Downsides, of course, it does have that opt-in census type stuff, but at least it is opt-out. You can tell it no, or you can just allow it to collect anonymous data. That's okay, too. Elementary, there's just too many issues with it, and I did highlight that in my Elementary OS 6 review, so you can have a look at that for a deeper dive. Zorin, well, really the only complaints about that, man, it's a little bit too bright until you turn on a dark theme. But uh, other than that, I think Zorin is definitely the, the better of the two distributions for new users. So that takes up my distro review. Let me know in the comments down below, do you agree with my assessment or am I off basis? And can you explain to me like I'm a three-year-old why elementary is so good? I just don't get it. <laughs> I've given it the best go. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.